are we're live okay hello it's bill the knee pain guru today is thursday march 31st 2022 today we're going to talk about a spontaneous compression fracture of the medial condyle of the knee so Let's see. We got the spontaneous compression fracture of the medial condyle. Let me get this set up here. And make sure to give the video a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications for future videos. So before we... Before we get into answering the question by um, Eliza Joy. I'm going to show you what a medial condyle is. So let me switch over so I could share the screen. Share screen. There I am. There we go. Okay, we're going to share the screen. Okay, medial condyle. Let's look at this one right here. So this is going to be the left leg. So this is going to be the bone on the outside of the left leg. This is the front of the knee. Kneecap would go right up in here. And this is the medial condyle. So this is going to be on the inside. Medial meaning middle inside of the, of the knee. Let's go back to the question that Eliza had. So just so everyone's familiar with where we're talking about in the body, because many times doctors use terms that are kind of confusing and we can get caught up in the, the diagnosis and then completely miss exactly what's going on with the knee. So we don't, we want to make sure we're connecting the dots and understanding the process of where the knee hurts in the pro in uh, in what we're talking about. So the question here is: we're talking about a, a spontaneous compression fracture of the medial condyle of the knee. So this is a compression fracture that took place on the inside of the knee. Uh, a, Eliza Joy writes, what do you know about spontaneous compression fractures of the medial condyle, please? Well, it's a compression fracture that usually comes from, I, I would imagine it'd be a, a jumping and landing, possibly straight legged or uh, standing on the leg too much. The legs or uh, the bones may be weak. Uh, and like the, the, um, Eliza, can you say, should one be non weight bearing? Is the condyle vulnerable to be misshapen? So, all of these questions that Eliza is asking isn't really telling me what's going on with her. So, this is how we can have a diagnosis from the doctor and it gets questions being asked that aren't necessarily addressing the problem that Eliza is dealing with or addressing. So we need to match those two up. So the question is, is it painful? Like what's going on? Uh, just me sharing my knowledge, wisdom, or experience with compression fractures of the medial condyle doesn't mean it's going to address what's going on there with uh, his knees. So let's zoom in and get a better understanding of what's going on. Um, is it pain it, uh, for Eliza? Pain when she stands? Is it pain when she walks? Is it pain when, does it hurt when uh, she sits down? Is it only hurt 
those situate uh, one or all of those situations or scenarios. We need need to get a better understanding of her experience of what's going on with her knee rather than going off on a tangent of does a, um, a compression fracture uh, cause like how to fix it. We need to know what her experience is. So that's a big thing. When you type in your questions, I'm in uh, sharing not only your diagnosis, but what is your experience as well. From my perspective, whenever there's pain, and I'm assuming there would be pain, we don't know enough by what Elisa um, shared. We need to understand uh, that what type of tension pattern is going on. So based on that, uh, that attention pattern going on, how can we create comfort in going on in the knee? With that information, we can go to specific, what I refer to as pain pattern interrupts to in the knee. That go a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications for future videos. If you have comments and questions, please type those in the uh, live chat or the comment section. And I see we got a few coming in right now. Okay, Elisa, uh, she said, thank you. No jumping, not a runner. Bones are strong. I've been tested. It was spontaneous, very painful. Painful, let's see. Very painful, especially on weight bearing. So, uh, so Elisa, this is how we're looking. This is the lens we're looking through to understand the pattern. So we have two different types of patterns that could go on with the knee. You have a, a pattern in compression. You have a pattern in tra traction. Um, and when we have pattern in traction, meaning the knee is extended, uh, when there's pressure down on the knee, it's going to hurt. The tension pattern comfort in the knee and change the neurological signaling in the knee, which allows the body to let go and unwind that tension pattern, that, that dysfunctional tension pattern that's going on in the knee. So the more we create comfort in the knee through traction, then we can see how that tension pattern may be going into a rotation pattern in the knee. It could be going in a side-to-side -side pattern, forward and back, or a tilting pattern that may be going on. How does that pattern tie in with the ankles and the feet? How does that pattern tie up into the, the hips and the knees? So by looking at that pattern in your experience of what's going on, we can begin to address what's happening um, through comfort. That's how we change the neurological ceiling in the knee. And then once we we create comfort. We expand on that comfort. And the more we expand on it, the body doesn't hurt anymore. So, Lisa, uh, let me know if that uh, makes sense. Um, and we can dig into that further if it doesn't. If it does, whoever's watching, give the video a thumbs up. Like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications for future videos. Um, let me see. Dressmos. Hello from Greece. Long time, dear Bill. Hey, <laughs> good to see you. Thank you for the uh, for the help. Nice. That's really cool. I like that. That is good to hear. I am going to grab that. Um. So yeah, appreciate that. Hundred kilos. That's that's pretty. That's legit. That's good stuff. Okay, Eliza. Yes, I think it could be that ham and the sandwich biomechanics uh, between the hip and the ankle might be changing. Uh, that could be the case. Um, the the fastest way I found the fastest way through that create comfort changes in neurology like pretty quick, and then we see 
what's on the other side of that. Um, if you would like more information, you can head on over to my website, theneepainguru.com, and get a complimentary membership to Neat Club Light. You can check that out. And you can also give us a call or let me, uh, let me see, speak or... Let me change that. Okay, let's see. Show the ticker. Speak to or text. So you can text us if you'd like. We can get in touch with you. Um, at the uh, our toll free number, uh, 877. 891-9484. It's questions. Please type those in the live chat or the comment section. We will get to those this evening. I'll be on here until all the questions are answered. And if you're watching the replay, type in your questions as um, I use these questions for future videos. We do these videos several times per week, asking questions or answering questions. We're addressing what you're struggling with and, and shifting, helping you shift your mindset to see that a lot of times it doesn't have to hurt to heal. Um, that the, the mentality of strengthening the muscles in the legs or pushing through painful physical therapy you're doing drug shots, surgery may not necessarily be in alignment with you, that there are other options or other alternatives that can help you tremendously in terms of getting out of pain in a very short period of time. And I'm happy to help as much or as little as you would like me to. So, it looks like that's going to wrap that up for today. I have a short video I'd like to play for you. And um, so I'm going to do that in just a moment. This is Bill Caravano.